Правильно, но вообще кипаш.
переключиться на сцену переключаемся на сцену или ну я посла ты говоришь я держу посла good morning ladies and gentlemen this year we celebrate 75 years of india's independence as well as 75 years of the establishment of diplomatic relationship between India and Russia. Today also marks 75 weeks of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav and the latest initiative is the Har Ghar Tiranga campaign. It invokes the best of the patriotic spirit amongst us as a tribute to those who have contributed to the struggle for independence and also to those who built India as a multicultural democracy in the last 75 years. May I now request the Ambassador of India to the Russian Federation, His Excellency Sri Pawan Kapoor, to kindly deliver the President's message on the occasion of Independence Day. Good morning, everyone. Namaste. Uh, I will start by reading the Honorable President's message, which he delivered last evening in India. Uh, last evening, and then after that, I'll make a few remarks. So I'll start with reading her message. No, no, it's fine. So this is what uh, Honorable President Srimati Draupadi Murmu uh, addressed to the nation last evening. My dear fellow citizens, Namaskar. My heartiest greetings in advance to all Indians living in the country and abroad on the eve of the 76th Independence Day. I am delighted to address you on this momentous occasion. India is completing 75 years as an independent nation. 14th August is observed as Partition Horrors, Horrors Remembrance Day so as to promote social harmony, unity and empowerment of the people. 15th August marks the day when we freed ourselves from the shackles of colonial rulers and decided to reshape our destiny. As all of us celebrate the anniversary of that day, we bow to those men and women who made enormous sacrifices to make it possible for us to live in a free India. It is a cause of celebration, not only for all of us, but also for every advocate of democracy in the world. When India won independence, there were many international leaders and experts who were skeptical about the success of democratic form of government in India. They had their reasons to be doubtful. In those days, democracy was limited to economically advanced nations. India, after so many years of exploitation, at the hands of foreign rulers, was marked by poverty and illiteracy. But we Indians proved the skeptics wrong. Democracy not only grew roots in the soil, it was enriched too. In most other well-established democracies, women had to wage long struggles to get their right to vote. But India adopted universal adult franchise right since the beginning of the Republic. Thus, the makers of modern India enabled each and every adult citizen to participate in the collective process of nation building. Thus, India can be credited to have helped the world discover the true potential of democracy. I believe this was not a coincidence. At the beginning of civilization, saints and seers of this land had developed a vision of humanity that was defined by equality of all, indeed, oneness of all. The great freedom struggle and its leaders like Mahatma Gandhi rediscovered our ancient values for modern times. Then, it is no wonder our democracy has Indian characteristics. 
Gandhiji advocated decentralization and power to the people. For 75 weeks now, the nation has been commemorating these noble ideals that won us freedom. In March 2021, we began the Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav with the reenactment of the Dandi March. This way, our celebrations began with a tribute to that watershed event which had put our struggle on the world map. This festival is dedicated to the people of India. Atmanirbhar. Based on the success achieved by the people, the resolve to build Atmanirbhar Bharat is also a part of this Mahotsav. Citizens from all age groups have, been, have keenly participated in a series of events held across the country. This grand festival is going ahead with the Hargar Tiranga Abhyan. The Indian tricolors are fluttering in every nook and corner of the country. Great martyrs would have been thrilled to see the spirit of independence movement coming alive again on such a massive scale. Our glorious freedom struggle was waged bravely across the vast territory of our country. Many great freedom fighters did their duty and passed on the torch of awakening, leaving little trace of their heroic deeds. Forgotten for long were many heroes in their struggles, especially among the peasant and tribal populations. The government's decision last year to observe 15th November as Janjatiya Gaurav Divas is a welcome because our, tribute, our tribal heroes are not merely local or regional icon, icons, but they inspire the entire nation. For a nation particularly as ancient as India, the passage of 75 years is merely the blink of an eye. But for us as individuals, it is a lifetime. Senior citizens among us have witnessed a dramatic change in their lifetime. They have seen how after independence, all the generations have toiled hard, how we met great challenges and how we have taken charge of our destiny. The lessons learned in the process will prove useful as we move towards the next milestone in the journey of the nation, the Amrit Kal, the 25 years to the celebration of the centenary of our independence. By the year 2047, we will have fully realized the dreams of our freedom fighters. We will have given a concrete shape to the vision of those who, led by Baba Saheb Bhim Rao Ambedkar, drafted the constitution. We are already on course to build an Atmanirbhar Bharat, an India that would have realized its true potential. The world has seen an India rising, a new India rising in recent years, more so after the outbreak of COVID-19. Our response to the pandemic has been appreciated everywhere. We launched the biggest vaccination drive in human history with vaccines manufactured in the country itself. Last month, we crossed the 200 crore mark in cumulative vaccine coverage. In combating the pandemic, our achievements have been better than those of many developed countries. For this feat, we are grateful to our scientists, doctors, nurses, paramedics, and the staff associated with vaccination. The pandemic has uprooted lives and also economies in the entire world. When the world has been battling the economic consequences of the great crisis, India got its act together and is now moving forward. India is among the fastest growing major economies in the world. India's startup ecosystem ranks high in the world. The success of startups in our country, especially the growing number of unicorns, is a shining example of our industrial progress. The government and policymakers deserve credit for beating the global trend and helping the economy flourish. During the last few years, unprecedented progress has been made in the development of physical and digital infrastructure. Through the Pradhan Mantri Gati Shakti Yojana, all the modes of connectivity based on water, water, land, air, etc. are being integrated in the whole country to enable seamless transportation across the country. For the vibrancy of growth visible in our country, credit must also be given to workers and farmers whose hard work has made it possible and entrepreneurs whose business acumen has created wealth. What is all the more heartening is that growth is becoming more inclusive and regional disparities too are reducing. But this is only the beginning. A series of economic reforms and policy initiatives have been preparing the ground for long term. Digital India, for example, is creating the bedrock of a knowledge economy. The national education policy is aimed at preparing the future generation for the next stage of the industrial revolution while also reconnecting it with our heritage. Economic success is leading to an ease in living too. Economic reforms are rightly accompanied by innovative welfare initiatives. A home of one's own is no longer a dream for the poor but a reality for more and more people, thanks to the Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana. Similarly, under the Jal Jeevan mission, a tap water connection is being provided to every household since the launch of the Har Ghar Jal scheme. The aim of these and many other similar efforts is to provide basic amenities to all, particularly the poor. The key word for India today is compassion, for the downtrodden, for the needy, and for those in the margins. 
Some of our national values have been incorporated in our constitution as the fundamental duties of the citizens. I appeal to every citizen to know about their fundamental duties and follow them in letter and spirit so that our nation reaches new heights. At the core of the transformation, we have been witnessing in healthcare, education, economy, as well as a number of related areas, is the stress on good governance. When work is done with the spirit of nation first, it is bound to reflect in every decision and every sector. This is also reflected in India's standing in the world. India's newfound confidence stems from the spirit of its youth, its farmers and above all its women. Gender inequalities are reducing and women are moving ahead, breaking many glass ceilings. The increasing participation in social and political processes will prove decisive. At the grassroots level, we have more than 14 elected women representatives in Panchayati Raj institutions. Our daughters are the biggest hope of the nation. Some of them brought laurels for the country at the recently held Commonwealth Games. Of course, India's sportspersons have been making the country proud by their performance in international competitions. A large number of our winners come from underprivileged segments of society. From becoming fighter pilots to space scientists, our daughters are scaling great heights. In celebrating Independence Day, we are celebrating our Bharatiyata. Our country is full of diversity. But at the same time, we all have something in common. It is this common thread which binds us all together and inspires us to walk together with the spirit of Ek Bharat, Shreshth Bharat. India is a very beautiful country, also because of its mountains, rivers, lakes and forests, and the animals and birds that live in such landscapes. When the environment is facing new challenges, we must remain determined to preserve all that makes India beautiful. Conserving water, soil and biodiversity is our duty towards our children. Caring for Mother Nature has been part and parcel of Indian culture. With our traditional lifestyle, we Indians can show the way to the rest of the world. Yoga and Ayurveda are India's invaluable gifts to the world. Their popularity is on rise all over the globe. Dear fellow citizens, our beloved country has given us everything we have in our life. We should pledge to give everything we can for the sake of its safety, progress and prosperity of our country. Our existence will become meaningful only in building a glorious India. The great nationalist poem, a poet, Kuvempu, who enriched Indian literature through the Kannada language, had written, and I'll read the English translation of what he wrote, and I quote, I will pass, so will you, but on our bones will arise the great tale of a new India, unquote. This is a clarion call of the nationalist poet for making total sacrifice for the motherland and upliftment to fellow citizens. To follow these ideals is my special appeal to the youth of the country who are going to build the India of 2047. Before I conclude, I would like to extend Independence Day greetings to the armed forces, to the members of Indian missions abroad, and to the Indian diaspora who continue to make the motherland proud. My best wishes to all of you. Thank you. Jai Hind. I, I just wanted to uh, touch upon a couple of themes which the uh, President has uh, mentioned in her address yesterday to the nation. Um, one of them, of course, is about the issue of the environment. Uh, we are seeing the impact of uh, extreme climate conditions all over the world. And uh, I know this is a, a big task at which the, the world, including uh, governments, are trying to work together. But I think it is important that we try and do our bit uh, in, in, in our own way. I think all of it can add to uh, whatever the achievements we need to uh, achieve. Um, you know, whether it's uh, in terms of electricity, water, uh, conserving our water, switching off lights when not needed, uh, trying to ensure that uh, there is no wastage of these resources is, I think, important. We also need to uh, try and completely get rid of the single-use plastics. Uh, you've seen that the Government of India has taken a big initiative in that regard, and I think we here at the Embassy and those of our colleagues here uh, from outside representing associations should try and consider what they can do to achieve these little uh, targets so that we can all contribute to this uh, important uh, goal, not just for India, but for humanity. Uh, the other issue I wanted to touch upon was the um, image of India. Now, I know here in particular in Russia, as in many other parts of the world, we are known uh, particularly for our yoga, for our ability to meditate, uh, for, for wellness and other aspects of uh, 
our, our, our contributions, as our president said, to humanity. And this is an excellent thing. And, you know, it's very important during stressful times, particularly for people to use these tools to improve their own well-being. And we must continue to uh, spread these and uh, work along these uh, with these tools with our colleagues here. At the same time, as you noted, uh, the Honorable President also mentioned, uh, is about the new India and what has been the developments in the last several years. And I think that is something uh, which I'm afraid is not being spread as much uh, to our fellow uh, friends here in Russia and elsewhere. But certainly for Russia, I would say that we need to be talking much more and telling our Russian friends much more about what else India has to offer. Uh, you heard the President talk about uh, uh, this, the, you know, the fact is that we are uh, the fifth largest economy in the world. Uh, we are the third largest economy in the world in purchasing power parity terms. Uh, we are one of the fastest growing major economies in the world. Uh, fortunately, despite the uh, challenges we faced, we are keeping up a very high positive growth rate and we are expecting to grow at almost 8% uh, even next year. So I think uh, the fact that we have a, uh, an amazing startup ecosystem, you heard her mention that we have a uh, I know for a fact we have the third largest startup ecosystem in the world. Our innovation is now, uh, you know, they're getting famous the world over. We have more than 104 unicorns. These are startups valued at more than $1 billion each. Their total valuation is more than $300 billion. Uh, we are an IT hub. Uh, we have done some amazing accomplishments in medicine. Uh, we have Dr. Soma here who is doing a lot of work with the uh, medical fraternity here. Uh, whether it's on the engineering side, whether it's innovation, startups, as I said, all this is something we need to talk more about uh, mm -hmm. to let our friends here in, in Russia understand that this is also part of very much the new India. And this is part of the new India that they need to engage with for the future so that we can continue to build on this relationship uh, as we go along, because that is really uh, what we need to do. We need to move on and look forward and look ahead. Uh, so I think that's a, a critical uh, thought that I wanted to leave with you. Finally, I just wanted to say that obviously um, these are difficult times, particularly for our host country, uh, and there's a conflict going on. And we have uh, urged um, uh, our friends here to you know, try and uh, seek an end to this conflict as early as possible, because I think that would be in the benefit and the interest not only of Russia, but of Ukraine, and also for the rest of the world, including India, and also for Russia-India relations. So I. Uh, leave you with the hope and thought that we can see uh, peace uh, very soon. Thank you very much. Jai Hind. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, we now have a unique and wonderful cultural performances by our own teachers and their students from the Jawaharlal Nehru Cultural Center. We begin with a patriotic song, A Vatan, A Vatan, from the 1965 film Shahi on the great freedom fighter Bhagat Singh. On the tabla is, Mr. is Sri Jignesh and Sri Arun Dubey is on the harmonium. Sri Jignesh, our JNCC tabla teacher, will also play a few tabla compositions. Thank you. Я вот людей показываю, пока там я пойду так.
तेरे कदमों पे हम बीच अपने सरों की चढ़ा जाएंगे ए वतन ए वतन
Next, uh, we have a Kathak performance by Sri Deepak Gangani, the new JNCC Kathak teacher. Sri Gangani is a professional Kathak and a teacher who comes from a traditional dance and music family of the Jaipur Gharana. He will begin with a Ganesh Vandana and invocation to the Lord Ganesh. It will be followed by pure traditional Kathak on Sarga. He will conclude with Vande Mataram and Ode to Motherland that will show beauty, purity and peace through dance movements and how the expressions.
Ladies and gentlemen, please give a huge round of applause for all our wonderful authors. Thank you. May I now request the ambassador and Madam Aradhana Sharma to kindly grace us on the stage to distribute prizes. To commemorate 75 years of India's independence, the Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav quest 
was conducted by the government of India to motivate overseas Indian youth and foreign nationals to enhance their knowledge about India. Five winners from Russian Federation have been selected in the quest, of which three have joined us today in person and the rest are joining us online. First we have with us Mr. Kirill Shabalin in the foreign national category. Next, we have Ms. Ayushi Das in the NRI category. And Ms. Avishi Das also in the NRI category. Next, the Embassy of India held an online competition on the occasion of the International Yoga Day on 21st of June. We have asked the participants to send us the best picture of them doing yoga. We shortlisted some of them and held an online voting where over 1800 people took part. Five of the winners are joining us today in person. In the first place is Ms. Olga Papanaga who is joining us online and couldn't be here. Please give her a round of applause. In the second place, we have Ms. Olga Zvereva. Ms. Irina Bundakova in the third place. We have finalist Mr. Leonid Yaryagin. Ms. Ulyana Lvova. Ms. Natalia Svidetskaya. We have a group photograph with the ambassador and ma'am, with your permission, sir. Uh, may I first request uh, all the prize winners to uh, up on the desk, please. All the prize winners from uh, Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav Quest and Yoga.
На ту сторону проходите. Next, officers from the services. Next, officers from the services, the staff and the spouses, please. Thank you. Next, members from the Indian community, please. Ну вот отфоткались они. Идут вроде опять на сцену, наверное, с другими фоткаться. Снимаем это, да? Ну да, они с другой партии. Good, good. Uh, uh, 
Ну, мне плечи. Внимание. Thank you. We have some more uh, members of the Indian community. Uh, may I please invite them also on there? The rest of the embassy officers, staff, their spouses and the local staff, please. The rest of the embassy officers, staff, their spouses and the local staff, please. Please hurry up. Thank you, sir and ma'am. Uh, students from the Embassy of India School, please. HOC, sir, please. Thank you. 
Это последний поединок. Так, ну, вроде все. Вроде все, все, все. Вроде все. Uh, thank you everyone for being with us here today to celebrate 75 years of India's independence. We have with us here two flags by the monument of Gandhiji and near the flagpole. Please do participate in the Har Gar Tiranga campaign by taking a selfie with the flag and posting it online. May I now request Ambassador Sir to kindly cut the cake please. Thank you.